what's going on guys it's your boy ghost here and today uh we got another twab so this is gonna be a quick quick one i'm gonna try my best to make it because i gotta go to work in like what 30 minutes an hour <laughs> so i gotta edit this out and get it up so anyway first things first the small one basically the big things for this week is festival of the lost an update from our pvp team commemorating the crafting any sparrow is always on time if you're brave enough and player support player report and movie of the week okay so the first thing that we need to talk about is festival of loss is coming i believe next week i think or the week after i can't remember but let's read it break out those tricks tri break out those tricks and those streets guardians and officially spooktacular season festival of loss is back next week with the space grandma ready to dole out these sweets and celebrate our, all of our mass wearing shenanigans for these for those itching to get into the halloween inspired spirit here's what you need to know about the festival of loss we're all, we're all bleh, we're really excited about the new addition this year that will make haunted sectors more rewarding when it comes to experiencing itself and the rewards they offer for the first time ever we're introducing legend haunted lost sectors there's a lot of loot to snag so let's break down what you're expected to blow eerie engrams a new type of engram for 2023 Eer eerie engrams have two uses players can crack them open individually for some treats or use them as currency for hocus focusing which we'll get which you will get into below how to earn eerie engrams eerie engrams will have a chance to drop upon compl completion of hunt lost sectors legend haunted hot lost sectors will also have a higher chance of dropping eerie engrams hocus focusing that's definitely a riff off hocus pocus but hocus focusing evil avante has some has seen what raul has been offering with this this season's exotic focusing and has decided that she'll offer her own spooky twist on the mechanic during festival of the lost Evil also will offer players opportunities to acquire exotic armor with four focusing categories in addition to the legendary weapons eerie engram focusing. So you can do armor focusing with different categories and weapon focusing. Weapons eerie weapon eerie engrams, festival lost weapons for higher candy cost, exotic armor eerie engrams, exotic lit. So an eerie engram for every armor slot as well. Uh, for focusing type for exotic arms is one eerie engrams and 2500 candy for legs is one eerie it's literally the same thing why did they have to list all these for random so for all the armor is one eerie ingram and 2500 candy for random festival of lost weapon it's one eerie ingram and 500 candy and then for a special festival lost weapon is one eerie ingram and a thousand candy special notes on hocus focusing players must own the expansion that the exotic is tied to in order to be eligible to focus to drop for only for it to be ordered Blah, cut that out special notes for hocus focusing Players must own the expansion that the exotic armor is tied to in order to, for it to be eligible to drop from Hocus Focusing. Requires expansion for each exotic armor piece is listed further below. The Forsaken counts. The Forsaken pack counts towards the Forsaken expansion requirement. So if you need something for Forsaken, Forsaken, I'm sorry, the Forsaken pack will suffice. Players will not need to have the acquired the specific exotic armor previously for it to be eligible for Hocus Focusing. Oh, this is new. That means that players who are still missing exotic armor will have a chance to earn it from Hocus Focusing. Players will only receive exotic armor for the class that they are currently playing while interacting with Hocus Focusing. Weapons, Eerie Ingram, a cosmic grenade launcher, and then her story pulse rifle, post her story auto rifle, I'm sorry, Gr Jurassic Green pulse rifle, and then another sniper rifle from Macab. Macab was goaded last year. It was so goaded that Bungie gave us the god roll for completing a quest. So I literally, got, I remember getting on like an hour or two before the event ended, did the quest, got the gun, and then got off. <laughs> Moving forward. So I'm not even going to read through all of these. If you guys want to pause and read, these are all the weapons from the exotic arm Eriograms. Eriograms. These are the exotic. Oh, look at this. this is okay, I like that. I'm not going to be using this armor, but it do look kind of cool. These are the these are the legs coming from the exotic legs eerie engrams. These are the armor coming from the exotic helmet eerie engrams. I don't even gotta read it. I'm gonna just show because I'm already doing it. But the fact y'all know what exotics are helmets and what's not. <laughs> so already moving forward. This is what the juice is for. One more thing before we move into what's coming up in PvP land. You like mementos? Do you like that slick new car black leather look? Do you, then you're definitely going to enjoy the haunting new memento that will be dropping in Festival of the Lost this year for a limited time only. I'm stacking up. I'm stacking up. 
they know we've been waiting for this black on black on slate black skin make it a shader <laughs> but they know that like we're, we're gonna get people to play this season because they want the shader <laughs> Just like usual, this memento is a random drop that will come from the form of eerie engrams. It won't begin immediately, but will surely you'll tri or triumph over any challenges that become between you and looking snazzy as heck, or at least snazzy as your loadout. <laughs> We've got our latest PvP strike team update ready for those excellent guardian peepers, starting with the, with the new look at the feedback you offered up for things like checkmate, matchmaking, and more. Take it away, strike team. Checkmate. We heard you all like checkmate. We want to make sure we get the, the, the tuning things just right before it makes its way out of the Crucible Labs. So please bear with us. We plan on making frequent and irritative changes to the modifiers. Some of you, some of these changes you can expect to see soon. Okay. Adaptive paint cannons with once again three tab at any resilience. Great. Rapid fire pulse rifles with three bursts at six resilience. Great. High impact pulse rifles with two bursts at four resilience with all critical hits. Reduced heavy ammo spawn frequency. Great. Any game mode with less heavy ammo is great. We plan on running checkmate and crucible labs for the remainder of the season so expect to see control and survival coming back for around two matchmaking speaking of frequent and iterative changes we are continuing to improve upon our matchmaking system with the mid-season patch we are compressing the skill band used for matchmaking in the control playlist think of it as reducing the number of divisions in the skill band the result is that there are more players in each remaining division and therefore more players to match with yielding quicker matchmaking times with continuing recognizing the difference in skill level with this change, the matchmaking experience for your first match or two will be out of sync as your skill gets remapped. We will be iterating on this in the next season. Spawning. It is known that there are long outstanding issues with spawns, such as spawn trapping, spawn flipping, and not spawning at all. And we made a few changes in the recent seasons reverted when we went back to the drawing board, and here we are again, ready to take another stab at it. Iterations. It's a common theme. Previously, we made a system systematic change that and less targeted changes so pre ugh. previously we made more systematic changes and less targeted changes this time we're looking to do the opposite less systematic and more targeted we're specifically specifically i'm sorry looking at to address issues on ultra flame and cauldron we do not expect to fix every issue but if we succeed in resolving some of the more frustrating cases we will apply these lessons to other cases on other maps Things to look forward to in the following season. Crucible playlist reorganization, including a 3v3 rotator mode. Skirmish is coming back. You love to see it. Competitive changes, including competitive weapon focusing. Rank adjustment updates in 3v3 countdown rush. You're telling me I can focus my competitive weapons? So you're telling me that God roll rose that I never got? I'm finally going to be able to get... I finally have something to do with my 99 Crucible Ingrams halfway through the season. Trials flawed card rewards. Rewards for win streaks less than seven. More checkmate modes. Dominion 3v3 Clash, aka Skirmish. We will be providing more details on, the, on those upcoming features soon. All right. Now for the crafting. We're getting the ammo from the crafting. In the loving ish memory of the crafting, Halloween may be the most spooktacular holiday at fear of the fear. But the crafting sure did give our dead team a nice scare back in September. There was chaos, mayhem, exotics acting like legendary weapons, legendary weapons acting like exotics, and nothing in the world made a lick of sense during the week period. Who needs Frankenstein when you can become your own mad scientist at the Relis? And Emmett? Oh, Emmett right. <laughs> okay, you gotta be on that one. Your guardian was, re was your guardians were massive troopers with while our teams worked hard to get everything back in working order and we're stoked to see the creativity many of you had while experimenting with the new world of possibilities and who knows maybe that week will inspire some fun shenanigans in the future for the immediate future however we want to commemorate this wacky time in pure bungee fashion with a new emblem everyone who played between september 15th friday, friday at 9 a.m pdt and September 21st, Thursday at 10 a.m. BDT, we'll receive an emblem when it's ready to go in season 23. Here's a sneak peek. Okay, boys, I forgot one specific part. They talked about changing sparrows, so let's talk about it real quick. Drive responsibly, Guardians. You don't gotta get ready if you're born ready. Always on time is a beloved sparrow for a few reasons, but the primary reason was the speed. There are so many other amazing vehicles to cruise around the galaxy in, so you don't wanna, you don't, so do you choose aesthetic or efficiency? Why not both? Beginning in season 23, we're making that need for speed universal across all sparrows. After all, you can't fight crime if you ain't cute, and that absolutely applies to our handy dandy modes of transportation too. Drive responsibly, Guardians. So, 
basically if you guys didn't know for the past like what year and some change i think ever since they made um i think that's like since like what beyond light always on time has been the fastest sparrow in the game so there's never been a reason to not use it and a while ago they said they're gonna change it so now they're finally changing it so we're all sparrows with the same speed always on time so you can put whatever one you want and the only difference between always on time and every other sparrow is the fact that um always on time you when you're riding always on time you get less uh enemies shoot at you less basically like they, they're less likely to shoot at you if i remember correctly but overall this is a great change and uh, i'm gonna keep using sparrows that i already have because i never got always on time and over the course of me raiding like once every couple of years i still don't have enough race spoils it's my fault don't really care but yeah uh back to the video and uh yeah that's pretty much it and basically just saying drive responsibly and here's some uh known issues and stuff but yeah i appreciate you guys being here um I'm gonna try to get this out before I go to work at 345. If not, I got another video out going out at 345 and you'll see that one. Hope you have a good one. And remember, stay spooky. I love you. Peace.